So I'll just be discussing my thoughts on the UAP UFO report and what I think about it, what I think will come out in it and what won't, because this is what's being covered up, the secrets being covered up. This report is basically to say that UFOs exist and we acknowledge that. That's all the government is acknowledging and nothing else. They're saying that's real and that's been recorded by the Navy and the Air Force pilots. So UFOs have been observed by the military and the Navy. They've been recorded. That's already been observed and released. And the US Navy said that's legitimate videos. That's real. So now the government will be acknowledging in the report that UAPs and UFOs are real, and that's about it. That's all they know. Of course, there's much more to that, and um, the National Defense Force and Security Force knows more about UFOs than they'll ever tell us. National security is top priority for them. They're not going to tell us what these UFOs or UAPs are, but they do exist and they acknowledge the existence of them. That is all that's going to be coming out of this report. Potential speculation of what this is, what this isn't, but we don't have a definitive answer of what it really is. We have no idea. Governments will never officially give disclosure that extraterrestrials exist or that there are advanced black ops projects creating man-made anti-gravity crafts for the Air Force, the Navy, as well as that there are off-world secret space program infrastructures with military bases, colonies, and engineering laboratories, laboratories on the Moon, Mars, and other planets in the Milky Way galaxy. They're not ever going to disclose that to us publicly and officially. It's not going to come from the governments. It's going to continue to come from experiencers like super soldiers, SSP assets who've done 20 and back, 60 and back in the SSP programs, ET contactees, ET abductees, and other types of experiencers. Disclosure is going to be coming from the public and their experiences. This is what will not be disclosed, but will remain secret with the cover-ups. Secret space programs, black ops operations existing since the 1950s, starting to build off-world bases on the moon, underground, and then on Mars from 1980s and onwards with the electromagnetic dome shielding covering the bases. Some of these bases are on the surface of Mars, some are underground and also colonies. That will not be disclosed, but that's what there is already in infrastructure that has existed since the 1950s, um, involving Project Paperclip, Werner von Braun, building um, space stations, having schematics and building space stations for the U.S. side of the secret space program, for the Air Force and the military, and using B-5 rockets to deliver supplies to the moon in the beginning, then working with anti-gravity craft to do that, to build the first underground bases on the moon, and then branching out to Mars and other planets in our solar system. There's also Solar Warden, which is a solar system SSP protection program with fleets of anti-gravity ships since the 1980s. It has US Air Force slash Navy involvement um, in personnel serving off-world on the off-planetary anti-gravity ships that they've developed. Some of it has been built out. The ships were built out in underground facilities then parts by parts and bits by bits launched into space and put together. We also have space station platforms with SSP personnel on them. We have a space station between Earth and Mars orbit and one between Moon and Mars orbit. We have several of them. They have cloaking 
technologies and capabilities to cloak them so satellites won't pick them up. There's also Dark Fleet with off-world breakaway organizations with space fleets having bases on the moon and Mars as well. It started with the Germans in the 1940s. Dark Fleet has something called Central Command, which is not German-run operations. It's other countries that operated like Nachtwaffenreger, and it has many different personnel, SSP personnel from different countries that speak different languages and work together. And they have language translation devices, and they wear them as earpieces to translate the, the different languages, and they work together. So Dark Fleet is not just German run anymore. There's Planetary Corporations, which has portal gateway jump room technologies to beam people off planet, off Earth, into the Mars bases and other facilities. There's the Mars bases, there's the cybernetics labs, and advanced anti-gravity crafts like the TR-20s. There's crystalline core power crafts with cloaking technologies, as well as beyond the speed of light warp drives in these crafts and other crafts, as well as plasma technologies that Planetary Corp had developed. That's what they started with. There's Earth Defense Force, which is protecting Earth space and balancing out the other SSP programs to look out for Earth's interests. So it's almost like Solar Warden, but it has Earth's concerns that it takes care of and Earth's protection. Solar warning takes care of the whole solar system, our solar system. Uh, Earth Defense Force is more for Earth. There's Mars Defense Force as well for Mars protection. <clears throat> and it does work closely with Earth Defense Force. There's now what is called Space Force and Space Command was renamed Space Force and it has the TR-6s and TR-10 crafts that it's been given. It's sort of to create an infrastructure to make it seem like, oh, we just have anti-gravity craft now in outer space. We are now building bases on the moon and Mars. This is going to be infrastructure that will be created in 2025s, 2030s, 40s, 50s, 60s, but it's to create a seamless transition. Like this technology, these, these SSPs things are being created and they exist now, but they existed since the 1950s. We already have the infrastructure, but Space Force is to make it legit to say, oh yeah, we do have it now and here it is. That we didn't have it in the past, but this has already been built out. So it's a kind of like a preface. Space Force is to legitimize this. Space Force has hyperspeed warp drives and some of the TR-10s. Eventually it's going to be disclosing that we have anti-gravity technology to travel to other planets, solar systems, and galaxies, and that ETs do exist, and they're studying that NASA and Space Force is studying extraterrestrial life and their existence, making first contact. Eventually, that'll all come out. And there's also the My Labs, which creates super soldiers, preparing young adults for making contact with ETs and to serve as adults in the various SSB factions as SSB assets. They also give psionic training, physical strength, strength training, augmenting intelligence, etc. Planetary corporations is one of the most biggest corporations that creates various advanced anti-gravity craft. It creates cybernetics nanotechnology to make biological human cyborgs, makes biological drug serums, holographic medical pods, and that's not coming out until 2080s. Planetary Corp has a lot of influence over my labs. It has influence over Space Force, Earth Defense Force, Time Corp. Planetary Corp works with all of these programs. They don't work with Dark Fleet. Dark Fleet is its own subset of programs. So then we have MJ-12's Griata Treaty, the Majestic 12, 
And the Griotta Treaty was that in 1947, the Greys, the tall Greys, they made a deal with the US government, the Eisenhower government, for providing basic anti-gravity craft technology in exchange for abducting human beings for genetic and medical experiments. During the 1950s, agreements were made with tall whites, the Dracos, for augmenting the technology for going off-world. Area 51 S4, reverse engineering of ET crash crafts, man-made anti-gravity propulsion craft already has been developed in Area 51 S4, and S4 is an underground experimental facility. And there's also S1 through S6, which has bioengineering labs and other types of laboratories in this huge underground complex. It's below ground and above ground is the military Area 51 hangars and other facilities that are on the base. There's also Skunk Works and they created and back engineered the TR-3B crafts, Aurora crafts that they developed. And now they are up to the TR-10 models being shared with Space Force. And these are newer models of the TR-10. They're bigger than their original Aurora TR-3Bs. So they can hold up to from 300 to 1,000 crew and personnel on the TR-10s. They're much larger than their original TR-3B Aurora crafts. And as well, secret space programs have large off-world colonies and cities in Ares Prime on Mars, Ceres colonies on, that's the moon, and in the Aldebaran star system. So there's various secret space program factions and groups, and they all have their own infrastructures. They're not dependent on Earth for resources. There's Dark Fleet Base 112 in Antarctica. There's Black Vault 9 backup world cloud storage and genetic materials of humans, animals, and plants. That's in the Black Vault in, Air, in Antarctica, and it's deeply underground. There's also the CIA, FBI, MI6, the DOD being involved in crash retrie retrievals of UFO crafts being aware of Earth underground experimental facilities, do, doing genetic experiments on humans, creating human ET hybrids. So these three letter agencies, four letter agencies are well, well aware of this and they've retrieved exotic metallurgic alloys from various ET crafts that crashed, including um, Roswell crash, those two ships and others before that and since. And there's also the dumb spaces and cities in the underground Earth facilities, military dumb spaces that are used for various experiments of weapons, other types of research. You name it, they have it. And they work with DARPA and HARP for weather modification and for other experiments, um, creating various mini CERN hadron colliders to experiment with wormholes, earthquakes, opening up space rifts for different dimensional purposes, portals that happens in some of the dumb spaces and the research facilities attached to them. So there's so much that's not being disclosed. Disclosure goes far more beyond UAPs, UFOs, and ETs. There's so much more to what should be disclosed that's not being disclosed right now. And we're not getting any of this disclosure except that UFOs are real and some information about the um, various reports that have log been logged of UFO sightings by the U.S. Navy, civilians. So the official narrative is that UFOs are real. And unidentified flying objects are real. They exist in our airspace, but we don't know much about them. And further information and studies needed to figure out what they are and uh, who operates them. Off-world, ETs, man-made, they're not going to disclose who operates them now. This is kind of my thoughts on this report. And adding in what's actually not being disclosed.